In today's short video, I'm going to teach you how to test ignition coils on both two and four stroke engines and show you just how easy it is to do at home. I'm also going to share a huge mistake I see people make, both when teaching on YouTube how to test coils and then people at home as well. And it can end up leading to you throwing away a perfectly good coil that could therefore cost you a huge amount of money. The process of testing an ignition coil is to check the resistance in the primary and the secondary windings. And in doing so, you can rule out the coil as the problem when diagnosing a spark issue on your engines at home. We're going to cover what you need to do the test, as well as the basic parts of an ignition coil, the resistance values, how to test the primary windings, how to test the secondary windings, why you might be getting bad readings, as well as symptoms of a failing coil pack as well. To test these resistance values, all you need is a multimeter, and it doesn't have to be anything special or expensive. Even a $10 multimeter off Amazon will do everything you need to and more. An ignition coil is fairly simple. At its heart, you have a laminated iron core, and this is also known as an armature. Around that, you have insulated wires in two spools. First spool is known as the primary windings, and the second spool around that is known as your secondary windings. And these are the two spools of wire that we're gonna be testing with our multimeter. On some ignition coils, you will have additional electronic componentry on the primary side, which act as triggers and a means to control spark timing, as well as limit the maximum RPM that the engine can run at. The resistance values of your ignition coil may very well be stated in the service manual, so therefore it's the first place to look. However, if it's not listed, it's fairly consistent for most engines across the board. Four-stroke engines will typically have a primary resistance value of between 0 0.5 ohms and 2.5 ohms of resistance. On the secondary windings, the resistance value will typically be between two and a half thousand ohms or 2.5 kilo ohms and up to around about 5,000 ohms or 5 kilo ohms and on a two-stroke ignition coil the primary windings are very similar 0.5 to 2.5 ohms of resistance however on the secondary windings they tend to be a little bit higher generally from about 5,000 ohms up to about 10,000 ohms is very normal but do bear in mind though just because I've said a primary winding should read somewhere between 0.5 and 2.5 ohms of resistance. If you're doing that test and you're getting 10 ohms of resistance, there's nothing in it. It's a very small difference and it's not going to be the reason why your coil's not working. However, if you're within the hundreds of ohms of resistance on the primary circuit, then you're much more likely to encounter that spark issue and the coil being the problem. And the same thing, of course, applies on the secondary windings. If you've got a four-stroke ignition coil and it's reading 7,500 ohms of resistance, it's not going to be the cause of your sparking issue. If it's reading two or three mega ohms of resistance, then it very well could be. So if your manual doesn't state what it should be, the values that I'm offering you here should be taken as an acceptable range, give or take a little bit either side. So what we're really looking for here is really high readings, really low readings, or an open circuit or an open loop on your multimeter. To test the coil, the first thing we must do is make sure we've removed all the rust, any oil, dirt or debris, and also any enamel coating that can be present on the armature that stops it rusting. We also want to remove all possible connections. So if you can unscrew your high tension lead from the coil, or you can disconnect the kill wire on the tab of the coil, then do so. We want to eliminate all possibilities that could give us a higher resistance value than just what the coil itself is showing. With your multimeter, set the dial to resistance and select the lowest possible value you can do. If you've got an auto ranging multimeter, then you don't have to worry about this. It will automatically set that range for you. On the multimeter pictured, the lowest I can go is 200 ohms of resistance. So that's where I would set that multimeter. Then we want to touch the two leads together and make sure firstly that there's no audible beep, which will show that we're actually in continuity. And then we want to make sure that the resistance value shown on the screen is 0, 0.0. If you find that you do have a small amount of resistance, 0 0.3, 0 0.5, it's okay. Just remember to deduct that from the value when we do the test at the end. Resistance isn't directional, so you can take either one of your multimeter probes and we're gonna place one onto the armature or the laminated iron core. And the other probe goes onto the tab that your kill wire connects to. Then we look for that 0 0.5 to 2.5 ohms of resistance. And that's exactly what we're getting here on this coil. So I know that the primary windings are good. And now to test the secondary windings on your ignition coil, we need to turn the multimeter to, again, that resistance value, but we want to go to 20K. 
20,000 ohms of resistance. Again, if you've got an auto-ranging multimeter, it'll do it for you and you don't have to worry about it. And then connect one probe to the metal armature. And it's really important here that you don't connect it to the kill tab, you do connect it to the armature. And the other end to either the spark plug spring or clip. And if you have been able to remove the HT lead, then you can touch it onto the barb of the ignition coil itself. You should get a reading of somewhere between 2.5K to 5,000 ohms of resistance on a four stroke coil and 5,000 to about 10,000 kilo ohms of resistance on a two stroke coil. So both of the coils that I've tested today, the two stroke coil and the four stroke coil, both have excellent resistance values on the primary and the secondary windings. Now remember back to the beginning of this video where I said I see so many people testing these coils and not mentioning a really important point about doing so. Here I'm testing a third coil and as mentioned before, the primary winding should be 0.5 to 2.5 ohms of resistance. But notice here now that I'm not only getting an inconsistent reading, it's not staying at a certain number, I'm getting up to three mega ohms of resistance. And this coil works beautifully. There's nothing wrong with it at all. It's come off of a perfectly working machine. What's actually happening here is there is additional electronic componentry in the form of transistors and resistors and diodes they're made up of semiconductor material and that's going to drastically increase the resistance value that you're going to get on the coil. So one way to rule out whether it's the electronic component tree that's the problem or whether it's just that you've got very high resistance in the windings is to actually test the secondary windings. So therefore we connect one probe to the armature and the other probe either to the barb of the HT lead or the HT lead itself if it's not removable and then read or write down that value. Repeat that same process but this time, instead of touching against the armature of the coil, touch against the ground tab of the coil. If the resistance value between the armature and the HT lead or barb is correct, but the resistance value between the kill switch or kill tab and the HT lead or the barb is incorrect, then you know that it's more than likely to do with the semiconductor material that's increasing the resistance value. So based off of the values that I've mentioned earlier, is this a two stroke or a four stroke ignition coil? And talking about bad readings, now I want to go over some of the other reasons that they could occur. Firstly, of course, we've got a damaged primary or secondary windings, faulty or failing electronic circuitry, resistor type spark plug boots, electronic circuitry that's working, but of course can increase the resistance, we've mentioned that, setting your multimeter in continuity rather than the resistance mode, and lastly, clear enamel coating or rust that you can find on the armatures and the tabs themselves. And then here are some symptoms to look for when diagnosing a spark issue. Firstly, the engine stops when it's hot, hard to restart when the engine is hot, stutters or stumbles at higher RPMs, you can't reach full RPMs, and hard and inconsistent startings. And of course, note that these symptoms can be attributed either to the ignition coil itself, but of course, all of the other parts that make up the ignition circuit as well, spark plugs, grounding wires, everything has to be taken into account. And on the topic of spark, I've done a video on my favorite spark tester. I hope you enjoy that video, and until next time, I'll catch you soon.